Folks, we all know that Marvel vs. Capcom 2 has its fair share of bugs and glitches. There are a lot of little game-breaking things that you can find if you really dig deep in the game. But something that there's not that much of in this game are actually Easter eggs and intentional hidden secrets that were left there by the developers. So because this game was really rushed out, uh, they didn't have that much time to do the normal amount of care and hide fun little nods to the player within the game. But there are some I've gone through, I've scoured the game and assembled for you a list of 10 hidden Easter eggs and secrets in Marvel vs. Capcom 2. But guys, before we get into it, I just want to put in a quick plug. If you guys could hit the like button on the video, it really, really helps me out, and I would appreciate it. And if you're not already, go ahead and hit that sub button. That way you won't miss it in the future when I upload more classic fighting game videos for you guys to enjoy. So if you do that, that would really help me out, and I would appreciate it. But on to the list, starting at number 10. All right, first up, I would say this is probably the most well-known Easter egg in Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and that is on the Clock Tower stage. This is a beautiful stage, everybody loves it, but did you know that the clock displays the real time? That's the actual time that it is in the world, at least assuming you set the time on your console correctly. Look, I'll prove it to you. Guys, I dug out the PS3 for this. I had to blow the dust off the old console, look. 12.48 on the PS3 clock, 12.48 on the in-game clock. I told you it's real. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Another fun fact about this stage, this is actually the only stage in the game with a destruction mechanic. Certain supers, if you kill the opponent with it, this will cause a stage destruction. You can see <laughs> the clock tower fell down. We're causing all kinds of havoc here in Marvel vs. Capcom 2, so that's a bonus fact. That's the only stage where that can happen. Speaking of stages, I think a common complaint that people have about this game is that the stages are just generic. Like, these are not, like, Marvel stages. This is not, like, a <laughs> some kind of X-Men stage or something. No, this is just a generic clown. I don't know why they did the stages like this, but the stages do not belong to the characters. They're just sort of random venues to fight in, but there is an exception. There are three characters in the game who are actually created for Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and don't exist in any other game, and they're all together on the fight screen so you can kind of see them together. It's Ruby Heart, Sansan, San, and Amingo, and they all actually have their own stages. So this is a Mingo stage. It's subtle, but you can see that there's a uh, sombrero back there. So there's definitely some Amingo vibes. And actually, doing combos on this stage can make the sombrero bounce around on top of the cactus. So that's a fun little sort of interactable element. This is Ruby Heart's stage. You know, she's a sky pirate, and this is the deck of her ship, the Partenaire. If you ever wondered what she was saying during this super? Partenaire, that's the boat. Don't question how the boat is able to appear on top of the boat, okay? That breaks breaks the lore a little bit, but yeah, this is Ruby Heart. And this is Sansan's stage. This is her village uh, where she lives with her grandfather, and I know someone is going to hit me with the, well, actually, Sansan is not original to Marvel vs. Capcom 2. There was a game from 1984 made by Capcom called Sansan, but that does not actually star this Sansan. It stars her grandfather, who is the protagonist of that game, and in the lore of Marvel vs. Capcom 2, he gifts her with uh, this magic expanding staff that she uses, and uh, she is tasked with uh, basically saving her village. So, uh, yeah, even though there is a game called Sansan, this Sansan was created just for Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and she's a pretty cool character, I would say, and this is her unique stage. Next up, I want to take a look at an Easter egg for Jill. So Jill from Resident Evil is in this game, and she has two pretty cool supers here. She's got this big rocket launcher, where she blasts you a bunch. She's got this one, where she summons the Tyrant from Resident Evil, and uh, yeah, he really messes you both up. But did you know you can actually combine both of these supers? If you do the Tyrant super, and then you do quarter circle forward plus kick right at the end, she blows both of you up, and this is a pretty clear homage to the ending of the original Resident Evil right here. So yeah, pretty dramatic stuff and a pretty cool reference if you've got two meters lying around <laughs> that you can use for that massive explosion. 
Next up, I want to talk a little bit about taunting. So you may know in the arcade version, you taunt by pressing the start button. But if you're playing on console, you might be like, well, start just opens the menu. So how am I going to taunt? You hold down the light kick button and then press start and you'll taunt or you can press them both at the exact same time. And Cable has a pretty interesting taunt. Did you know Cable can spam his taunt? If you hold the light kick button and mash start, He'll, ju he'll just keep that gun spinning forever. Cable has a couple interesting animation things. After he does standing heavy punch, he stays turned around <laughs> for whatever reason. And then after you do this move and connect with it, he's just going to chill in this pose. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. These don't really do anything. You can just end any of these poses by pressing any button, but it's a nice little visual flair. And while we're on the subject of taunts, obviously Dan from Street Fighter Alpha is well known for his taunts. In this game, taunting with Dan builds a big chunk of meter, so, you know, if you can get some taunts off, you can also taunt in the air, which builds meter as well. And, as in most games, Dan actually has a super taunt in this game, so it's gonna be done with double quarter circle forward plus taunt, so double quarter circle forward light kick plus start. And, uh, yeah, he does this nice little super that does not hit in the slightest. It's just a style on the opponent. But one more fun thing about Dan. Dan actually has a unique intro. If you hold Light Punch when he comes in, he's gonna come in and lose his sandals at the start of the match, so that's pretty good. As opposed to his normal intro, you know, he rolls in and he's looking confident. No falling, no sandals on the head. So, yeah, Dan, as far as I know, is the only character where you can select a second intro for him. So that's pretty cool. Lots of little hidden stuff here for Dan. So Dan may be the only character with an alternate selectable intro, but as far as I can tell, Sakura is the only character with a selectable win pose. So here's going to be Sakura's normal win pose. You know, she just, she hulks out a little bit. She, <laughs> sometimes she randomly hits herself on the head with the boot. And sometimes you get this dancing one. <laughs> it's random between those two. But she has a third one that can be selected. If we're going to do a kill with a super and we're just going to hold down both kicks, we should get her alternate windscreen here. Yep, her friend comes in from off screen and, you know, they do the dance together. So a nice little team up windscreen. So yeah, that's a nice little Easter egg that only Sakura can do in this game. But one thing that everyone can do in this game, whenever you kill the opponent's last character and you're about to get stuck in your win pose, just press start and you'll get control back and you can do whatever you want. You can beat up the opponent's dead body if you want to be really disrespectful. But for whatever reason, if you kill them with an assist out, both characters, you know, are going to come out here for the win pose and there's nothing you can do to cancel this. Pressing start does not let you keep hitting them if you have the assist on screen. So next up, we're going to talk about Rogue. So Rogue's power drain mechanic in this game is kind of interesting. She will steal a power up from the opponent based on what their character is. So Wolverine is fast, so I get speed up and this unlocks like some new combo potential and stuff for her. So that's kind of cool. From Colossus, he's a big boy, so I get defense up and I'll take less damage. So the different power ups are better or worse depending on which character you're fighting against. But if you happen to be fighting a character like Colossus, he has a super that gives him armor makes him absorb attacks, and if you power drain him, look, you're gonna get that from him. So now look, it's Rogue with armor. Very rare, she can just go through everything. Kinda sick, until this timer runs out. This applies to Silver Samurai as well. He can use this ice charge. If he uses it three times, he's gonna get, you know, super armor for everything, and then Rogue can steal that. So again, I don't really think this is something that's gonna happen in a match, but it is pretty funny. Seeing Rogue with super armor, it's a rare sight that you're definitely not going to see every day when playing Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Speaking of Rogue and Silver Samurai, they actually have another unique property to them that's kind of interesting. Silver Samurai, he has a bunch of power-up supers, but he only has like a couple attacking supers that he can do normally. He can throw these giant shurikens, or he can do this big lightning burst. But what about this super, where he runs forward and hits you a bunch? It's kind of a jank super, and you're not going to find it on any move list. And the reason is because that's actually his team hyper combo. So you know that if you press both assists at the same time, your whole team comes out, and they all do a super together. And for some reason, Silver Samurai and Rogue, as far as I know, are the only characters in the game that have supers that can only be used during te team hyper combos. You can see he's running forward, 
and he's doing the thing. You can't do that super normally. You can only do it as Team Hyper Combo. So if you're down to one meter or if they're your last character, you're going to have access to this. And it's, you know, kind of useful. You can combo into this move. And this is pretty cool for Rogue too because Rogue literally only has one super normally. She just has this one where she sort of hits you with a combination and then smooches you. But this gives her access to a second super that she can do just by pressing both assist buttons. So I think that's pretty cool that, you know, even though these characters don't really have these as supers, they did have to put them in the game just to make their team hyper combos work a little bit more smoothly. All right, one last one. Let's close out the list. This is probably the most inscrutable thing in the game to me. Did you know that the character select screens are different based on what platform you're playing on? I don't understand why they did this, but look, I'm playing on Dreamcast version and Tron Bond's right here, kind of in the middle. M. Bison is over here in the lower left corner. But here in the arcade version, everything is all screwed up. Bison's up at the top. Trombon is over here in the upper left. Why did they do this? <laughs> Just to screw me up, I swear, if I ever play the arcade version of this game, I have no clue what's going on. I can't find my characters. I don't understand why they shuffled these around, but it's kind of an interesting little minor thing that might be hard to notice. But okay, if that doesn't count enough as an Easter egg, I got one more for you guys to cap things off. Did you know... Let's select some different assists here. We're going to select Zangief A. We're going to select Cable B, Cable Beta, and then uh, Captain America Gamma, ty type Y or type C assist, okay? So we've got A, B, C assists on the team. Now watch what happens in the actual game. Look up at my character's portraits. Do you notice that Zangief has a red background on his portrait? Cable has a green one and Captain America has a blue one. So A assists will always have the red background. B assists will always have the green background. And then Gamma assists will always have the blue background. And you can see my opponent's team, they're running all B assists. So if you're ever not paying attention when your opponent's selecting your characters and you're like, wait, what assists are they running? Are they running Sentinel Rocket Punch or drones? Or you just don't know. You can always remember using that, that the color reflects what assist you've picked for your character so that's a nice little trick that uh, i did not know until recently i just learned this like after years of messing with this game this was something i just learned so kind of cool but with that we are going to close out the list guys i hope you enjoyed it it was pretty hard for me to find 10 things like i said there's not a lot of intentional things like this in the game there's a lot of bugs and messed up things by accident but in terms of intentional easter eggs and secrets there's not a lot so a lot of work went into this, so I'd really appreciate it if you could hit the like and sub buttons once again. If you liked the video, it helps me out quite a bit. Leave a comment. Let me know what kind of content you want to see in the future. Want to see glitch exhibitions, combo videos, match footage, whatever you want to see, let me know down in the comments. And with that, we're going to close things out. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.